Judgmental Zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non-judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time someone shook your hand? When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believe in you? When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time someone shook your hand? When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believe in you? We are a non-judgmental zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church, from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non-judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time someone shook your hand? When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believe in you? We are a non-judgmental zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non-judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time someone shook your hand? When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believe in you? We are a non-judgmental zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non-judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time someone shook your hand? When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believe in you. We are a non-judgmental zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non- 
judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time someone shook your hand? When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believed in you? We are a non-judgmental zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non-judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time someone shook your hand? When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believed in you? We are a non-judgmental zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non-judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time? Chapter 41. Verses 41 through 43. And when you have it, somebody say amen. Genesis 41. Verses 41 through 43. Let's uh, quickly, we're going to welcome our online audience on tonight. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. You guys ready for the word? All right. It says in verse 41, chapter 41. So, I, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. And then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger. And he dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in a chariot as his second in command. And the people shouted before him, make way. Thus, he put him in charge of the whole land of Egypt. Amen. Uh, tonight, I want to talk briefly from the subject, prepare for key. Prepare for keys. Y'all may be seated. Come on, prepare for keys. Prepare for keys. Amen? Prepare for keys. Amen, somebody. All right. Somebody shout, prepare for keys. Come on, louder. Shout, prepare for keys. Um, you're in a season, if you don't know this, you should know this now. Um, but many of you are in a season of transition. Come on, somebody. In a season of transition. What does that mean? That means that God is bringing you out of small into bigger. Now, y'all going to have to say amen a little louder tonight. You can't just... He's bringing you out of a season of small into bigger. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? So um, let, let's get into the text because Joseph has had a very, very derogatory past, right? And his past is so, how can I say it? It's so messed up to where if any of us had gone through what he went through, 
we probably would have given up. I'm just saying. Rejected by his family, thrown into a pit, raised in Egypt away from his family. You know the story. Well, after spending years in prison, Joseph is released from prison. And Pharaoh promotes him simply because Joseph had the gift of interpretation. I don't know who this is for tonight, but the Lord said that promotion is coming to your house. That was a soft amen. I need, I need a thicker amen, a louder amen. Somebody say, promotion is coming to my house. Bible says, verse 41, so Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge. Can we do an exercise? I need you to put your name in the blank when I say this. I need us to say this. Say, promotion is on, then put your name there. What's your name? Come on, talk. Promotion is on, Dwight. Come on, go. Come on, louder. Come on, say, promotion is on. There you go. Come on louder. Say promotion is on. Online. Come on. Promotion is on. There's something about opening up your mouth and decreeing and declaring what God had already spoke over your life. Let me give you number one tonight. You ready? Talking about preparing for keys. Here's number one. God needs someone he can trust. Mm -hmm. God needs someone he can trust. Do y'all hear me? Do you know why God had you wait so long? Because he could trust you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to talk. Do you know why you had to wait so long? Now, y'all know y'all waited longer than most people. Y'all. Yeah, you ever saw people getting promoted in advance and accelerating, and you know you were there way before they were? But you, you, you got a little frustrated, but you didn't even make a big fuss out of it. You just went back and said, you know what? I'm used to it. I'm going to ride it on out when my time comes on. And, and, and maybe God knew that you were one he could trust. And if he can trust you, you ready? He protects you. Now, God protects all of us, but there's an there's a extra layer of protection on those he can, y'all ain't going to talk to me, on who he can trust. So many of you are saying, well, Lord, how come I was not released yet? How come you haven't? allow me to excel or to elevate and it simply is because God was protecting you because he did not want your anointing to be, get contaminated well pastor what do you mean how can your anointing get contaminated when you're around the wrong people and they're putting the wrong stuff in your spirit and you start you're anointed but now you're functioning with the contamination because you're around contaminated people. And people who are contaminated don't really know they're contaminated. Because they think everything they do is right. And so God said, number one, he says, I need someone to hand keys to that I can trust. If there's anybody that can't be trusted, you don't need no keys. You ain't going to get nobody no keys to your house and you don't trust them. Don't play with me tonight. You're not going to give nobody no keys to your car, to nothing significant. You ain't going to give them ache at all. Y'all don't, you ever gave a key to somebody that, that, you know, was like, man, I shouldn't have gave them that key, man, because they, they just going to run wild. Because here it is, here it is, authority in the wrong hands can become abuse. If you give the wrong people authority too fast, oh, I'm going to stop. They will act a fool with it. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? So listen, he says, he says, I, I need to use someone I can trust. I want you to be happy tonight because your season is now. 
Listen to me. I'm going to say that again. Your season is now. You passed every test. Uh-oh. You passed every test. You may have passed it crying. You might have been frustrated. You might have been stressed out. But I come to tell you tonight, you, you, you have passed the test. You have arrived. Tell somebody, I passed the test. I, I passed the test. And listen, it wasn't just one test. Baby, I've been through multiple tests. I, I was tested yesterday. I got tested three years ago. I got tested the last five years. All I know is, come on, somebody, I keep going through. I, I'm, I have passed the test. And so what makes you think you're going to fail now? If, if, if you pass before, then you're going to qualify and pass yet again. This is why I understand some of y'all who, who, who be crying wolf because if, if God brought you through all of that before, why are you acting like he ain't going to come through again? Can we talk? You've been laid on your rent before. You know he, oh, see, I ain't. You done had a broken relationship before. You know he going to come through. Hey, come on here, somebody. In fact, I think we ought to just take a moment and thank God that the relationship did break. I'd rather for the relationship to break than for it to break me. And see, God says, I let the relationship break, but it ain't going to break you. Come on here, somebody. So let me break it off before it breaks you. Because some of y'all, some of y'all are upset because it broke. But if God did not break it, then it would have broken you. So he says, I'll, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. He says, so I've cut it off now so that you don't lose your mind later and let's go you're only going to be crying for really a couple weeks you might be stressed out maybe a little month but at, at, come on somebody after you suffered a while God will strengthen you and establish you I think we ought to take a moment online and in person just thank God that it didn't break us if there's anybody in the room right now that's, that's in a situation that's threatening to break you the Lord says it ain't going to break you. You ready? It's going to elevate you. Because I'm taking the wisdom that I learned from this relationship being broken. And I'm going to use it to help somebody else. The only reason, that's what a testimony is. A testimony is a test. And I went through the test so I can share the testimony Y'all, come on here, somebody. Somebody shout, God can trust me. We won't be long tonight. Somebody shout, God can trust me. Some of y'all act like you don't know. Come on, say, God can trust me. He can trust you. Point, period. He can trust you. This ain't for you to get the, high, the big head, but he can trust you. So your life is not like everybody else because he can trust you. And so you cannot fit in with the clique because he can trust you. Yes, Lord. Come on here, somebody. And so you may not get what other people have right now because he can trust you. And when he can trust you, he protects you with an extra layer. The Bible says this. Pharaoh said, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. You ready? Of the whole land of Egypt. Can I give you point two? Keys are released for one reason. Expansion. Keys are released for one reason. Expansion. the Holy Ghost there. Keys are released for one reason. Expansion. Um, can I say this with you? Um, if you think these keys 
are for just a new house, you have missed it. Some of y'all logging off right now. Because you saw keys. You're like, this is my word. This is my word. My car coming. I don't want you to miss it. If you think these keys are for a brand new car, you missed it. Now that can be added, but material don't last that long. And there are some things you are believing God for that he's going to give you. But I cannot tell you that you're getting keys for a house and keys for a car. This ain't what these keys are for. Let me tell you what these keys are. These are keys for your future. Y'all missed it. You missed it. So I'm unlocking to you, the Lord says, your next decade. And whatever's in store for you in the next decade, oh, hey, it's in store for you. So I prophesy this over you, that the next decade of your life is going to be better than the last decade. And so if that is a prophetic word that you've received, then you also have to receive this, that you have to live. For the next decade. And you got to be in good health for the. Oh. Y'all better wake up. Come on y'all. And you got to be in good health for the next decade. Woo. So we, he don't say things like the next decade. And you be struggling the next decade. Matter of fact lift your hand. We bind any sickness and disease. That would try to come over you. To mess up the next decade of your life. Come on here somebody. We bind the thought in the hand of the enemy. Of trying to attack you. From enjoying your next decade. I declare that what you feel now. Even in your body will cease. Come on here somebody. It's just a test for your testimony. That you have to live the next decade. And the older you get. The younger you're going to get. Come on here somebody. I'm trying to tell somebody tonight. That the Holy Ghost has been making you younger. There's some folk I went to school with that look really rough. They look 20 years older than I do. Because sin, y'all listening? Sin will age you fast. Somebody said, mm hmm. Sin will age you fast. Drinking and smoking and, oh, y'all don't want to talk about this type of stuff, do you? It will age you fast. Elbow your neighbor and say, the Holy Ghost kept me. Go. See, we don't talk a lot about that, but tell somebody the Holy Ghost kept me. Come on, hear somebody. Lobasha, come on. Tell somebody the Holy Ghost has kept me. You know, the Holy Ghost will smooth, uh, it'll smooth your skin out. Come on here, somebody. Oh, I feel like running right there. Y'all think I'm playing. But you ever, do you ever look at yourself in the mirror and you know you've been walking with God? He's like, you know what? Something looked different about me. And I'm aging backwards. And he says, I only give you keys for one reason. I release it for one reason, that's for expansion. Everything around you is about to expand. Now, you heard about expansion before, but I'm going to tell you tonight that everything around you is about to expand for a good reason. And while you were looking at other people expand and grow, Sometimes every growth is not a healthy growth. Some people grow and it becomes an inf infection's growth. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. But God says the type of expansion that we as a church are about to experience is healthy expansion. So weeds need to be trimmed. Edges need to be sharpened. Huh? Water, uh, flowers need to be watered. 
you got to understand that I'm in a season now where God is expanding. That's why you couldn't date that person anymore. Oh, see, I'm a. Let me turn to something else here because let me find something in 1 Kings and Samuel because y'all. Because when people see you expanding, some folk can't handle that, you know. They cannot handle you growing and prospering. They cannot handle you being fruitful. Y'all ain't, ooh, I felt the Holy Ghost here. The Lord gave me a word earlier. If I share it with y'all, we're going to lose it, bruh. We, okay, I'm going to share a little bit of it. He gave me a word to share tomorrow. It was a video I did. And you know what he told me? He said to me, as soon as I stood outside, he said, this is about to be a summer of abundance. I'm, a, I'm sorry, y'all. I done got out of the picture frame. I done, I, I done get. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, let me finish telling you. He said, he said it's going to be a summer of abundance. Come on back around the corner. He said, <laughs> y'all got to be in person to see what they're doing. It, it's it's going to be a summer of abundance. And he says, your greatest abundance will be in July. Right around the 14th and the 15th. Listen to me. I'm going to do something I don't normally do on Thursday night Bible study tonight. I'm going to prophesy to everyone listening in person and online. And I'm going to tell you this. If I be a man of God, July is going to be a month. Listen to me. Not only of abundance, but it's going to be so much that you're going to have to look for people to give it away to. Woo! Good God Almighty. Somebody shout, this is going to be the best summer of my life. My God, my God, my God. I prophesy over you right now. Somebody about to send you some passes for some cruises. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. Somebody, come on, somebody. Somebody about to just give you your own rental property. You, about, you don't know what's about to happen. Come on, get up here. He, a summer of abundance. I know I'm in his spirit because he told me that. I wasn't even planning on saying that. And he says to, to tell them that, that it, 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 this summer is going to be a summer of abundance. And you know that it's going to be a summer of abundance because you are just straight out of your dry season. If you're in a dry season right now, y'all better shout. If you're in a dry season right now, you know what? You ain't never had your bank account looking like that, that low. You, you ain't never been dried up. You ain't never had a problem getting gas. It's just been challenging you. You had to go back to work and find another job because you don't know. If it's dry like that, God said the summer of 2024 going to make up for it. And, oh, I got to get out of this thing. Oh, I got to get out of this. Oh, I got, we're going to lose it in here tonight. I got to get up out of this thing. I got to get out of this thing. I got to get out of this thing. Hey, woo! I got to get out of this. I need you to, I, I'm going to give you an assignment. I need everyone in here to look up the word abundance this week. And write it down or, or screenshot it <laughs> and post it. You need to study about abundance before you step into abundance. So you see all the signs of it when it comes. Because if you don't know the signs of abundance, you'll just receive one thing and think that's it. But abundance is self-sustaining. 
it's 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 the thing that keeps on going, the stuff you weren't expecting. Listen, it it comes and you weren't you didn't even really know it was coming. Now you have in your mind how it's going to come, but you really don't know how it's gonna come. Woo! Right now, the Lord is speaking to some owners regarding you. There's some stuff. Oh. There are some things that are about to be transferred to you. You ready? With no money down, he says, I'm going to transfer stuff to you with a handshake. Woo. You ought to shake two or three people's hand just to see what it feels like. Just shake a couple of people's hand. Real quick. Come, come. Y'all ain't did nothing tonight. Come on here, somebody. Just shake a couple people's hands so you, 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 you can know what it feels like. Because when you shake hands, there's going to be wealth being transferred into you. Y'all ain't said it to me. When you shake hands, come on here, somebody. There are going to be some things that are going to shift in your favor. And I prophesy over you tonight that the next three hands you shake will share in the abundance with you. Go, go, go. Go, go. Girl, we're going to celebrate together. Man, we're going to celebrate together. Bro, we're going to do this together. Come on here. We're going to do it together. Woo! I'm about to lose my mind here tonight. Y'all come get his microphone. I was trying to get home and watch the movie, but I can't. You know why? Because I'm stuck on abundance. Okay, let's go here. Keys are released for expansion. <laughs> Woo! I got to give you this next one. Y'all, can we, can we get a couple more and we go home? Okay, so number one, what we say, God needs someone he can trust. Number two, what we say, keys are released for one reason, expansion. Good. Let, let's, let's get to the third one. You ready? Bible says, then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his finger and placed it on Joseph's finger. My God. My God. You ready? Point three. He's taking the keys from the arrogant. Whew. What time is it? He's taking the keys from the arrogant. Uh, yeah, I'll wake up tonight. Come on now. For those, we're, we're talking about prepare for keys. We're in Genesis 41, 41 through 43, point three. He's taking the keys from the arrogant. I'm going to talk here. There are a lot of arrogant people with keys. <laughs> Some of them might be watching right now. There's a lot of arrogant people that got keys. Hear me, hear me. But just because, Sister Cynthia, they got keys, don't mean they're supposed to have the keys. Because some of them did the wrong thing to get the keys. Y'all are going to say that to me. I don't want to talk about it. They did some under-the-table stuff. And see, they only did that, th that thing to get those keys to look like they were ahead of you because they could not wait as long as you and because they could not put the time in like you did. They said, well, I see where she's going. I see where he's going. Let me look for an opportunity to grab the keys to where they're going, to jump ahead of them, and then to turn around and laugh at them and to say, look where you're at, look where I got, and I just got here. But anything that comes quick won't last. Okay, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I said anything that comes real quick won't last. So they did it to try to use man a manipulation against you. To make you feel, hear me, like you ain't going nowhere. I got folk right now, can I talk, that I went to school, seminary with. I got folk I went to Bible college with. That graduated and walked into 3,000 seat sanctuaries, huh? And a staff and 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 
they turned around and laughed at me because I started from scratch. And, and I began to wonder, I said, Lord, how come, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. I, I said, how come it, 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 it looks like they came right into roses. And they ain't went in through no thorn bushes. They haven't gone through no, come on here, somebody. And it, it looks like they just advanced. And then they turn around and say, oh, who was that boy down there in, 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 in that little building that, that started a church trying to do something like that? But see, what they don't understand is that when God takes his time with you and you yield to the plan of God, hear me, there's more power. Come on here, somebody. And the Lord said, I'm sick of arrogant people with keys. Because when we talk about the body of Christ and the kingdom of God on earth, we got folk that will never allow you to advance within the kingdom because they are the one with the keys. And so what they're doing is they're choosing and picking. Oh. They're choosing and picking who they like. Y'all are going to say that to me. I like that one. I like that one. Kind of like uh, uh, Jesse's father. You come, you come, you come, you come, you come, and come on to the banquet. And he, he just forgot about, just, just didn't even invite David. How many of you haven't even been invited? God help me today. I, I, I can deal with long suffering, but it's just the fact that you be waiting and you ain't even get an invitation. You, you, you been waiting and nobody even mentioned, God ain't going to talk to me. And nobody, but, but, but the Lord says there is a blessing and an acceleration on those of you that have waited. I feel the Holy Ghost brewing here tonight. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, you, there's about to be a wind of change over your life. <sighs> Somebody take one deep breath and just blow. <sighs> There's about to be a deep wind that comes over your life that's going to just blow you right into your purpose, right into your future, right into your destiny, right to where you're supposed to be. Come on. Somebody say there's about to be a wind to change over my life. Woo! I feel it tonight. Sometimes you have to do prophetic exercises. You got to turn around like there is, oh, Somebody do it right now. You ought to just jump up and turn around like there is a wind that just hits your life. A prophetic turnaround. Hey, hey. And if you do it one more time, the Lord says, I'm going to do it by Monday. I don't know who's believing God for something, but he says, if you do it tonight on a Thursday, I'm going to do it by Monday. I got to strip the keys from the arrogant. There are people in leadership right now that don't care nothing about people. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to say that to me. And they got keys. <sighs> okay, let, let, let's move on, okay? Bible says, number one, God needs someone he can trust. What's number two? Good. Keys are released for one reason, expansion. Point three, what is it? Good. Let's go to number four now. Let's go to verse, uh, the B clause of 42. You ready? Bible says he dressed Joseph in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. Can, can I give you point four? There is a new look of authority over you. There's a new look of authority over you. Can, I, can we talk? Okay. When Joseph was given robes, the first time he got a robe was when he was a boy. His dad made him, his dad made him a robe, an ornament robe, and put it over him. And that robe symbolized priesthood. So he had a prophetic garment as a child. And his brothers did not like it because they thought they deserved the robe, and they stripped him from the robe. And tore it off of him and, and, and made it look like he died. That was his first robe. The very next robe he doesn't get until after he went through the pit and went through prison. Because before you can wear the robe, you had to go through some stuff. The first robe was a teaser, a precursor to the real robe. 
So now that he gets this other robe, when the robe is placed on him, Sister Addie, hear me, the robe only confirms what God already said. Let me help you. He is not anointed because of the robe. And the anointing on his life is already there. So the robe affirms that he is who he say he is, but understand that he had already been affirmed. You know, before you ever place in a position, you already got to be working the position before you get placed in it. So whenever your boss looks at you and says, I'm going to promote you, that means that you're already doing something that they see you doing in the future. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. So Joseph had already been prophesying. He had already been laying hands on people. He had already been teaching. He had already been through the jail and prophesying and interpreting dreams. And so when the robe is on him, it's just confirmation for what God's taking him. And what I'm trying to get some of y'all to understand is, is that the robe really don't confirm me because God already affirmed me. Do you know you've already been affirmed? Y'all, let me, you, you've already been affirmed. So, that, now here, here's a challenge I have. Um, as, as we begin to embark in this, this, this new apostolic grace that's on our church, it's always been there. It's always been here. The apostolic grace that's on my life has already been on my life. So, what people see is what God already gave me. Okay. So God will send people to confirm. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. What's on you? So when the, the consecration happens in August, it's a double, ah, a double affirmation of what God already did. Some of y'all are about to get some double affirmations over your life. You about to have at least two or three other people affirm and confirm what's already on you. And if God has already been speaking it to you, you already know it. Step into it. I prophesy. You'll step into your ministry. You about to step into your business with boldness and confidence. You about to step up to the things that God called you to do. Why? Because God, before the foundation of the world and Jeremiah had already appointed you as a prophet to the nations, which means you cannot deny the hand of God that's on your life. Let me show you how powerful the call is on your life. When I moved to Atlanta 22, 23 years ago, you ready? I moved here to go to college, but I was running from the call. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. Brother Michael, I knew the call was on me when I was, anybody ever ran and you knew God was calling you? You were just running and running. And, and, and Sister Ebony, Jonathan, I thought that when I, when I got here, I would leave the call there. Don't act like I'm the only one. See, you geographically moving does not exempt you from the call. And in fact, wherever you go, the call is there waiting for you. So when, the, when Morris Brown shut down, I was going to go back home, and I didn't want to go back home. I said, Lord, you brought me all the way down here, and the school shut down. And, and why, out of all, all the schools, out of all the schools, you going to let this one shut down, man? I could have picked a couple of them. You could have. And he said to me, he said, son, he says, now, I, I want you to go to Bible college. I fought that call. I said, I ain't doing that. Absolutely not. No, I'm about to do this. I'm going to do my own thing. You know, th there's a difference in your agenda <laughs> in God's agenda. Oh, you can act like you're about to do some stuff. You, you know, God will let you think you're about to do something more. He'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But until you realize you're not in control. And when he spoke to me, I was running from it, and I broke down in tears. I said, I don't want to do that, man. I didn't, now, he didn't force me to answer. But I was in a place where I knew that even in my brokenness, it's 
best to submit. Oh, y'all ain't going to say that to me. I want to prophesy over somebody tonight. You might as well go ahead and submit because it's, <laughs> it's already frustrating. You know you don't know what to do. Just answer the call. Submit. Here it is. Here it is. And, and he called me, and I was a mess. I don't want you to think that God calls perfect people. And I meet a lot of folk that say, I'm going to wait until this gets together. I'm going to wait until I get that together to come back to church. Well, here it is. If God waits on you, then he just going to be waiting, ain't he? So what he says is bring your broken self into the house of the Lord. Let me meet you. Let me change you. Come on, here's somebody. God specializes in affirming, hear me, broken people. Moses murdered a man. Oh. Moses murdered a man and was on the run. He killed somebody. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But he could not escape the call. He says, Moses, what you did was wrong, but I'm going to hunt you down. Y'all, come on, here, somebody. I'm going to hunt you down. For Come on, somebody. And, and I'm going to watch you move into the desert. And I'm going to keep my hand on your life. And while you think you're a failure and while you're running trying to, come on, somebody. In fact, when I called you, I already knew what was going to happen before I called you. Stop acting like what you did is a surprise to me. I built that in when I called you. When God called you, he knew you was going to mess up. Can I say something to you? Can I say something to you? Most of my major mess ups didn't come until after I got saved. Oh, see, y'all going to leave me out there by myself. See, because that's when the devil really comes at you. When you're in the world, you don't really care. But it's stronger when you made a conscious decision to submit. Then the devil really says, I really want you to mess up. And he built all that in. Oh, I, I, let's just take a moment and thank God that he built in our failures and still called us. He called you with your imperfect self. He called you with your lying self. He called you with your proclivities. He called you with your insecurities. He called you knowing you would sleep around. He called you knowing you would drink, knowing you would smoke. He called you knowing you would steal from people. He called you knowing that you had these little nasty desires. Huh? He called you knowing that you would still do stuff that wasn't godly. He called you still. Don't you ever let anybody make you feel like you ain't worthy. Pharaoh threw them robes on Joseph and says, boy, not only are you going to walk in authority, I'm just confirming your authority. You got to walk at another level of boldness this season. If you believe in God for something, then stand in it. Come on now. I'm, I'm sick of y'all quitting, saying, Lord, I'm going to give up. It ain't happening in my time. I got a word for you. You got to reopen it. You got to reopen it. And you got to go back. And you got to do it again. And this time will work because the Lord says it's a blessing the second time you strike it. I need you to stop giving up on the first strike. If it don't open the first time, you walk away, you cry, you pout, you lose it. You're frustrated. You got to call five different people to get counseling and you only did it once. The first year we started this church, people were coming left and right. The next year, everybody left. And then everybody else came back. And then other people left. And another group came back. And then everybody else left. And another group came back. Shoot, I didn't need COVID for people to leave. They... <laughs> I didn't need no COVID. It was already. When COVID hit, I was like, oh, that's part of the cycle. Shoot, I'm used to the folk go. And I got up here every Sunday with two people and all that. And I preached like a, I, I didn't lose an ounce because I was used to folk. Oh. Here, here it is. Here it is. 
I had to realize if I was in it for the call or if the call was in me. And people will make you realize what's really in you. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. And the Lord says, I need you to start walking with a level of boldness and authority and decreeing and declaring things. Surely God wouldn't call you for you to fail all the time. After you have suffered a while, God will strengthen you and establish you. You're moving into a season where he's about to establish you. See, let me help you. When eh, you are moving in a season where God is about to establish you. And when God establishes you, the wind can come and it won't blow you down because you're anchored. These are the people that God's raising up. He's raising up folk that are anchored. Folk who ain't moved, hear me, by rumors. Scandal and lies. Hey, shot, boy, shot. He said, I need some strong people to build the church with. And y'all can talk about Peter all you want. That boy was strong. You can, lie, you, can, you can get mad at Peter, but Peter was strong. He was so strong that Jesus himself named him the Greek word Petros, which means rock. He said, upon this rock, he called Peter a rock. I wonder if there's anybody on your road that's a rock. Come on, here, somebody. Come on, girl, you can trust me. Man, you can trust me. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm in it. And come on, somebody. I'm in it when it's good. I'm in it when it's bad. I'm in it when it's tough. I'm in it when you're suffering. I'm in it when you're low. I'm just in it. I'm just going to be here. I'm just going to be around. Get used to me. I'm, I'm a rock. And rocks don't move often. Hey, hey, shy, little boho, shy. If you ever want to keep a door closed from people getting in, don't you put, don't put no chair in front of the door. Get you going out in the back and get you. Y'all missed it. Go and get you one of them big cement blocks, rocks, and put that by the door. They, come on, somebody, they ain't getting in that door. Because you can't, you can't move a rock like that. And he says, I need you to walk in another level of authority. You ought to walk through Kroger and just start commanding stuff. Say, in the name of Jesus, by this time next year, I'm going to have this. You ought to just practice and just walk up to somebody and say, God told me. To. See, you have a level of authority in you that you haven't activated. We were just doing ministers and training class before Bible study, and uh, all of them have a level of authority. When they really begin to tap into their authority and their level and what God called them to do, they're going to change the world. Y'all ain't saying that to me. So we got them teaching and preaching and going through stuff. Why? Because when they begin to build up what's in them, it cannot be moved. I was strategic when I started the MIT class. You know why? When I started MIT class, come on, somebody, it, it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge because I'm looking at sacrifices and faithfulness. Because if you call to ministry, you got to, come on, here, somebody, you got to give up some stuff. Oh, it's more than just calling yourself a pastor and, come on, somebody, and, and an evangelist and a prophet. Oh, get past the title. Can you show up for somebody and pray for them when they're in the hospital? Come on, here, somebody. Can, hey, come on. Can you give somebody the shirt off your back when you need a shirt on your back? Oh, I, can you bandage somebody's wounds when you cut too? And while we're here, we always talk about church hurt. We don't ever talk about pastor hurt. 
See, because, because we, we're always in a position where we think, uh, if somebody said the wrong thing to me, I'm moving on to the next. But they talk about you all day on your job. See, y'all don't want to talk to me now. What I'm trying to get you to understand is there are some things as, as a believer that you just have to be able to handle. You can't give up and fold every time something goes wrong. If you are a rock, so what, girl? If they broke up with you, move on with your life. My God, they were a headache. Getting on your nerves. You, I wish you would cry over somebody that was bringing your life in hell and driving you to hell. Can I say this to you? Listen to me online. Listen to me in person. What the devil tries to tempt you with next, you ready? He's trying to tempt you with it because he wants to send you to hell. He's trying to send you to hell. Oh, we don't want to talk about that, do we? Me and my wife were talking yesterday about do people even have a reference that hell is real? I mean, we just out here just fornicating and adultery and, and, and lying and, and stealing and cussing and fighting and drinking and clubbing. And, and we act like we ain't going to have no consequences. I've been having dreams. I've been having dreams. I had a couple of dreams. One dream, I was in the mall. I couldn't get out. Another dream was I was walking through something and I couldn't get out. I said, Lord, what is this crazy? He woke up and said, what was that about? And Lord says, I need you to start getting prepared soon to start really teaching the people about the significance of living in sin. Why, why are they living in sin? Because sin pays your wage, which is death. Well, after death, I don't even why we're getting into this. Well, after death comes judgment. And if you don't pass that judgment, then you have to spend your etern the rest of your eternal life in damnation. And hell was not created for us. It was created for the devil. Oh, see, y'all don't. But when you deny God, oh that you end up in a place of eternal torment. I don't know who this is for tonight, but I feel a prophetic warning right here. I hear the Lord saying to tell somebody, you better stop it right now. Yes, shot. You better stop your behavior right now. Oh, the Lord told me, he says, he says, if, if you get in sin now, I'm going to strip you from some stuff. And I'm going to take it immediately to show you I, at any moment I'll take it away from you if you want to mess up. I can't. I got to get out of this. You need to consider your ways. You need to consider your ways. Oh. Y'all pray for me because I'm afraid <laughs> that as God gives me stuff, I'm going to just Start letting loose. I, it ain't personal. It ain't personal. But somebody got to talk about the sacredness of the temple. Hey, Sha, and live it right. Somebody shout, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. Uh, Y'all ain't going to talk to me. There's somebody that's listening that was going to get into something tomorrow. No, I'm wrong tonight. What if you're in sin and on your way to get into more sin and your car flip over? <laughs> y'all don't. L -l Listen to me tonight, y'all. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's got to be a stronger reverence for the holy things of God. Back in the temple, folk 
I ain't gonna be able, folk aren't going to be able to really hang around you this season. Because they're going to see that God in you and they're going to try to hide from you. They're going to see the God in you and they're going to be like, oh my God, I can't go around them with this. And you're going to think they're just dogging you out and leaving you, but they're not going to be able to handle being around you. Hallelujah. Because there's a certain level of discernment coming on you. You about to start saying, Latoya, the Lord said, you about to start seeing things. Hasha! From afar off. Hey. My grandma was still living. You know what she do? She, she'll go through and start rebuking demons. <laughs> I'm talking about in your face. Y'all cannot be worried about what people think of you. So if you're going to be on assignment for God, you're going to have to just be on assignment and do what you're supposed to do. Because you don't want God saying, I told you to do this, but you were afraid of what they would say. That's what Moses' issue was, is that what are they going to, what, how am I going to do? Get out of yourself, man. And tell them that I am that I am a sin in you. Somebody shout, this ain't about me. There was a time growing up in the church, this ain't in my notes, where we grew up and we talked about holiness and we showed back up every week. <laughs> because we needed it. Oh, shot. I'm over my time. I didn't know we was going here tonight. I think we need to close here. I'm on a whole different direction, but I feel an anointing in this room. Standing, I feel an anointing in this room really quick to invoke the presence of the Holy Ghost. Because I hear the Lord saying there's some things I want to clean out in you. I want to purify you. Shalabaka. I want to purify you. And the Lord said to tell you, he is, he is proud of you. But there's another level he wants you to get to now. He says this. He says, I want my people to make me a priority. And not the minority. I want them to make me a priority. And, and I don't want them to put me last. Ha! I feel the Holy Ghost. He says, I'm tired of people putting me last. He also says, I don't want you to call on me when you just need something. But just call on me just because uh, I'm too faithful, Sister Mardina. Somebody open your mouth right now and just call on the Lord tonight. Come on, hands lifted all over the room. 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 Eyes closed, hands lifted, eyes closed, hands lifted, eyes closed, hands lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, eyes closed, hands lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Oh, Esha, open your mouth, open your mouth. Erdebasha. Open your mouth and call on the Holy God. Open your mouth. Call on Yeshua HaMashiach. Call on the name of the Lord. Open your mouth right in here. Come on. Let the glory fall in this place. Let the glory cloud surround us in this atmosphere. <coughs> Let the Spirit of the Lord have his way now. In the name of Jesus, let the Lord be God. Hey, God, we thank you for protection mercies. Hey, Sha, we thank you for keeping our bodies in the name of Jesus. You thank you for keeping us in our right mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Yes, Lord, come on here, somebody. 30 more seconds. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Come on. We thank you. Open up your mouth and begin to thank the Lord. We thank you. Come on. We thank you. Hey. Woo. 
In the name of Jesus, we declare, we declare your name is good. Your name is good and your name is worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus, saturate the atmosphere. Saturate the atmosphere. Saturate the atmosphere. Saturate the atmosphere. Hey! Hey! In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Clap your hands tonight. Clap your hands tonight. We thank the Lord for what he's done on tonight. Amen, somebody. Give, give one or two people a hug tonight and say the Lord bless you. Come on, go give them a hug. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Tonight. As we are on our way out tonight, tonight we are, we are giving tonight. We're giving tonight. Tonight, let's give. <clears throat> let's posture ourselves to give on tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, how many of you uh, thank the Lord for this Bible study on tonight? Uh, refuel. Amen. We're giving tonight uh, uh, online and in person, dollar sign, generation of hope. Amen. Dollar sign, generation of hope. Amen. Or you can text the word give there that's on the screen or you can give via Zelle. Amen. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord tonight that the Lord is expanding our borders. Amen, somebody. We thank the Lord that he's raising up a church that's going to preach and teach the unadulterated truth. Amen, somebody. We thank the Lord on tonight. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Online, you can give now. Amen. In person, you can give. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Blessings. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. We thank you today, Lord, for your word. Watch over your people. Keep them. Cause your light and your face to shine upon them now in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. When's the last time someone gave you a hug? When's the last time? Someone shook your hand. When is the last time someone told you that they loved you? When's the last time you were surrounded in a room full of people that just believe in you? We are a non-judgmental zone. We are a community of believers and people that want to stand with you and walk through your darkest places in life. We are the generation of Hope Church from all walks of life, from different backgrounds, different cultural norms, different languages. We serve only one purpose, and that is to bring salvation and Jesus Christ into your life. We are the kingdom of heaven on earth. This is Hope Nation. This is a non-judgmental zone. We are a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. The Generation Hope Church is reaching the lost, the broken, and rejected. Welcome. When's the last time someone